Now let's move on to the next question. Functions f and g are defined by these two, right? Uh, as you can see here, this is simply a straight line and this will be a curve. Now part one, we have to solve this equation. So let's first find this one. What is g f of x? So pretty easy, g f of x that will be two times f of x that will be two x plus one minus one. Here we have f of x that will be two x plus one plus three. Simplify, you will have four x so plus 2 minus 1 is plus 1 over 2x plus 4. E is equal to the value of x. So first thing first, cross multiply. Let's continue over here. 4x plus 1, that will be 2x squared plus 4x. So in everything to one side, you will have 2x squared minus 1 equal to 0. This will cancel out, obviously, right? Um, and what else do we need to do? Now we have to solve x squared. That will be 1 over 2. So x will be plus minus 1 over 2. Okay, that will be uh, part 1 of your question. Now let's move on to part 2. We have to express f inverse of x, uh, g inverse of x in terms of x. So pretty easy, uh, 1 by 1. So first thing first, let y equal to f of x, which is this plus this. Then make x become subject, you have 2x equal to y minus 1 x will be y minus 1 divided by 2. From this we conclude f inverse of x, it is in terms of x, we have to write x minus 1 over 2. Now this one same thing as well, so let y equal to g of x, which is 2x minus 1 over the value of x plus 3. Now we have to cross multiply because we're trying to make x become subject. That will be xy plus 3y is equal to 2x minus 1. Now we have to uh, send x to one side, you will have xy minus 2x have to be minus 3y minus 1. So factorize x outside, you will have this, minus 2, this, this. Now we have x have to be minus 3y minus 1 over the value of y minus 2. So g inverse, in terms of x, we can write this the same way, there's no problem with that, right? Or you can also rewrite this as Simplify this as well, because you want to take out the value of minus outside, that will become 3y plus 1, because here we have minus. If we bring it below, it will become 2 minus 1. Same thing. Okay, both are the same thing. That will be part 2 of the question. Now for part 3, we have to show that the equation this has no solutions. So no solutions, we have to look at the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac. When it has no solutions, it means this have to be equal to less than minus 0. So let's see what can we do here. So g inverse of x is equal to... So here I forgot something, it needs to be in terms of x. That will be the same equation, minus 3x minus 1, this over 2x again. So here we have y, sorry, here we have y, but here I have to x. And that should be equal to x. So now we cross multiply, you will have what? Let's see, that will give you minus 3x minus 1 give you x squared minus 2x. So x squared minus 2x plus 3x plus 1 so x squared plus x plus 1. There should be 1 here, 1 here. Now this is the value of a, b, and c. So let's find out what is b squared minus 4ac. b squared minus 4ac. b squared is 1 minus 4 times 1 times c that will be minus 3, which is less than 0. Again, because we have shown that it is less than 0, it means it has no real roots. No roots, no solutions, shown as required. Now for the last one, we have to sketch the graph of y and inverse of also f of x and inverse of f of x, making clear the relationship between the graphs. Always is going to be the case, so make a note of that. The relationship between inverse and the graph is a reflection in the line y equal to x. It's always going to be the case. So let me kind of draw the graph here. So let's first, we have f of x, which is y equal to f of x is 2x plus 1. This is simply a straight line, right? When x equal to 0, y will be 1. x equal to 1, y will be the value of 3, right? We have two passing points. We can form that straight line. This is the the y-axis and the x-axis. The first point, let's say it's here, for example, and the second point, let's say it's somewhere over here. 
For example, now by joining those two, that will form my straight line. Right? This will be my straight line. For example, right? And then I understand that it has to be a reflection in the line of y equal to x. I need to show that line as well because that's what the question needs to, to know, that I understand the relationship between them. So let me continue this some more so you can see clearly what's happening. Now after doing this, I just need to reflect. This should be somewhere over here, somewhere over here. For example, kind of reflection over here. I think it's not perfect, but you get the idea. It needs to reflect exactly onto my line. It should be somewhere over this. As you can see, label this as y equal to x, and this one will be f of x, and this one will be f inverse of x. So this is one point, one point, and this is also your point, three points, by showing these three things. Okay, again, this is the relationship between those two lines. And that will be your question in relation to function. So something here I want to point out is um, you have to be careful over here. For example, for the first question, uh, because x is defined for more than zero, we cannot give both answers. We have to give only one of them, which is this one. So we have to be careful for these kind of question. You will, you don't want to lose easy marks, right? That is why we have to be careful with the domain given to you or allowed by the question, and then we have to choose which one is the correct one.